Okay, we're going to make some adjustments here. It looks like this has been falling on because it's got a custom curve here, it looks like. It's a little on the loose side. So you go to grab the brake, you got to kind of reach way over here to grab it, so it's way too low. And I'm taller than she is, so it just have to be way up here for her to ride it. If he rides it, he's going to be his own. <clears throat> if he rides the bike, he ain't going to be happy with what I'm going to do right now. Move it up here, we can get a hold of it. See how this thing is bent way down. Pulling on this corner instead of on the front like you're supposed to. You're supposed to put your hands straight out and just touch the levers. That's where you should be. So for me, this is where the stuff should be. For him, I think he might have been slightly taller than me on the upper body. And she's a lot shorter. So, so they're going to be pissed about that. I don't care. Driver don't work on those screws. Yeah, this is sure nice. Hopefully that works. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to appreciate that movement I just did. Hmm. Or they might not even notice. Oh, yeah, that's true. You never know. You could be right about that. Okay. Where do we leave off? I think they're gonna miss their zip tie. Keep that form. Oh, look how that hangs down like that. I don't know why they would do that. Mm -hmm. What kind of a moron would do that? Why would you want it out like that? It's whatever's there in the way. You know how soon you're gonna hit this on the ground? Mm -hmm. Stupid. What is this thing? Yeah, it kind of rotates up a little bit with vibration, maybe, but. Uh oh. It's a nut willow to a piece of junk. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... yeah, you got all kinds of room. You just put that thing all the way back up in there where it belongs. But... Oh well. They probably don't corner hard enough to do it because they don't feel any grab. Mm -hmm. Any dragging marks. I think I might actually hit that, maybe. Okay, put this in the tools away. Never throw your tools. It looks a little loose. And it gets looser as you hit bumps because the swing arm's way the hell down. Mm -hmm. It's way up here. Shock, there actually is a little bit. There in is. There. Can't see it, but there's something in there. Oh, yeah, it looks like it was changed once. That's live. Now, that is supposed to be all the way up to the bottom of the plug. Of mm -hmm. course, I do have the bike up in the air right now, but see, actually, the bike is level because it's got an extended front end on it and a dropped rear end. The bike's actually level right now. 
So it could, it wouldn't hurt to have a little extra oil put in this. So maybe I'll just slip some in there and sort of leak more, make them happy. I appreciate that. Now they said this didn't work very well for some reason. Doesn't move. Now, what do you think it's going to take to make that work? Open prayer? Prayer or rotor pads bleed? Rotors and pads? Bleed. Bleed? I can't guarantee you need to bleed. Probably need rotors and pads too. I <clears throat> got a little stack of spacers and shit over there. Why would you have a dished rotor on a Harley? That's probably why they need all the spacers. That's a front brake rotor for a PM caliper. Mm -hmm for a PM wheel that they quit making 20-something years ago. <laughs> That's the brake rotor. I have that wheel and I have these rotors. Still got pad material there. That was the old one that was junk. The new one's still good. Uh, what else do we got? Those dikes over there. I think I found a problem with the brakes. Yeah, there we go. Ten hundred zip there. We're getting lower. It'll bleed better the more I make it. Uh, Allen's over there. I'm gonna need a couple of them. I need this one. These are worn out. All right. Yep, that was the one we needed. Good job. Fluid. Hmm. It's got movement. It's got movement. There's no flow. There's no moving on this side. So. Yeah. These are C's or there's an air pocket or something. Yeah, there could be the cup in the back in there is junk. Yeah. This is bypassing fluid left and right, which is very popular. Very possible. Could be that there's something plugged up in the wire someplace, which is another possibility. So 
get air coming up out of there. Yeah. Just come back with it over here. Yep. Should go more than that. Just need to get more pressure on it. Something bigger. Need a wrench. There you go. <laughs> That's it. No more. She's plugged. Can't get any bigger. All right. So now I got the cups completely compressed. So whatever was in here blew back. Filled this thing up almost full, and a little bit of air came out too. It looks like. got to lock down that so it can't bleed anymore. Can't compress. So I gotta find some kind of something to stick in here to about the size of my finger. Let's see what we got laying around here about the size of my finger. A bunch of big washers will do it. Can't put them all in there. I can put that many in there. Still got quite a bit of room. I just need something thinner than these. Hmm. Let's see who we get. a little bit better than those crappy ass fence post washers there. <laughs> oh, damn, just not quite enough. <clears throat> or on the hand too. All right, that's in there. So we got a bleeder screw right there. It's probably three eighths of an inch.
Can you go over there and work the bird? Sure. Put pressure on it. You got it? Down? Yep. That's enough to make the brakes work. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting air out of it yet. I'm sure there's air in the system. Yep. Hold that there. Actually, want to go uphill here. It's up here. So get the bleeder straight up, so if whatever bubbles are in here, it'll work its way up. Just got to make sure this line's going uphill the whole time. See, we got this thing over here. And it could be a big bubble of air right underneath that brake switch. You don't know until you get to break it free and find out. In a position like that, it can very easily have a big air bubble in it. And all this line where it goes up and over stuff collects air. Yeah. So we'll just try this like this. Right from the get-go, I go. Okay, hold it there. Let's see what we get here. It's fluid. Okay, let go. So we got nothing but fluid. Pressure. Don't go real fast. Anything happen? Go faster than that. No, no, just let it, just let it sit. Let it go all the way up. Let it go all the way up. Let it sit for a second. Get a chance for the air bubbles to do whatever they're going to do. Stack. I don't want to fall a little bit. So you can see it should be able to close up right here. One pump. Two pump. 
three pump. It's tight. Go slow so you don't pump up a bunch of foam. Two. See how it's got pressure instantly? You want to see that? That means it's working good. Okay, that's about the thickness of the pad. Let's see how this piston's coming out, but not the other one. One more out. Yeah, see, this one's coming out, but not the other one. That one's almost to the point, it's going to come out all the way. So, this one here is when we need to get coming out. At some point, this is going to blow right out, and we're getting pretty close to that point. Now we're going to go ahead and back pump it. I'm going to blow all the fluid right back up and hopefully no air comes, but if it does, it'll be a good thing. It means there's air in the system. Okay, so look back there. All right. Clean fluid. Looks like it, yep. No air? No air. Clean fluid all the way, right? Yep. <clears throat> See, that's a high volume bleed. If there was any air in that system, it would have blew it past all the high spots all the way back. Yeah. Because that was coming back pretty quickly there. Yeah. It was high flow. Okay, so the pads are all the way back out now. Okay, so I think it's bled now pretty good. Put it back on the bike. Make sure you get the pads where they belong. This time we're going to put some red Loctite on those screws. We do not want those to come out. Very important that they stay put and not fall out. Long do it. Get all the washers in there. Nothing's falling out, that's a good sign. We're going to rotate until you find the thread. Make sure nothing's falling out of loose. Should be good. Okay, now you give it slow pumps. All the way down, back up slow. See how the fluid has to go down? And then come back, it has to suck it all in. Go in. See how it sucks down? Like these pump real quick, it just aerates the hell out of it. You put air back in the system. I'm trying not to do that.
before it's getting hard. Not a problem with this, problem back there. Okay, it's a little bit low on fluid, but I'll see if they got any more of that fluid they got in there and they can put their own fluid in it. it looks like it's older dot five, probably about four or five year old stuff. They quit using purple lately, so they got more of an amber color fluid most of the companies now. Confuse you. This you only torque it a little bit, it's rubber gasket, so if you torque it a lot, you just squeeze the rubber out, that's all you do. Check. Mm -hmm. Hit the brake. There go. At least one button. be kind of set in its own spot it wants to be at. Mm -hmm. it's just that tension on there. Not a lot, but a little bit. It'll, it'll wear itself in probably. So it hasn't been used for a while, so. Yeah, that's what I was say. So you can only get a little bit of oil in the tranny. So we'll get some oil for that. We'll be back. Formance. RevTech. Got a bunch of this when I bought trannies 15 years ago. Still got some. Still good? Yeah, I went through the boxes a few years ago and pulled all the oil out of the boxes. I mean, it's about this much in there. I thought it was going to be red. It ain't. Just stinky ass gear oil. All right, let's put a little bit in there. It wasn't too much oil, <clears throat> was it? That's hard to say. Not up to the bottom of the thread, but it's close. Still a little low in there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot further up than it was. You see how much I poured in? <laughs>
This thing's going to hold about 20, 24 ounces of oil. I think I just put in about six, so. if not more. Probably more than that. I put quite a bit in there. Let's see, how did I do? It's here, and it was way up here, so that's 16 out of 24. That's like 10 ounces I just put in. I put half the, half the transmission work in there. Yeah. It was only slightly low. They're not going to know what to do with the thing actually shifts and yeah. clutch works and brake works. Is it going to start? I have no control over starting. <laughs> it's not my department making a run. Oh. Yeah, it's late and I do that tomorrow. We'll start up tomorrow, run it in the air, work the brake a little bit to make sure everything's running correctly. You think there's any oil in this? He was checking this, he said, so. Didn't sound very full, did it? Yeah, that's good. Just black. Yeah, he's been putting oil in that. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. At least the motor's got oil in it. At least. A lot of times you don't have any oil when you open check that stuff. You be careful. All right, so I'll check the carburation adjustment tomorrow. Cut brakes. Damn, she didn't know what to do with that. That's good. I scare herself. Stand on that, it's going to actually slide. Probably. All right, I'll get back on this today. I'll go ahead and light this thing off and see if I can adjust the fuel mixtures on it. That's going to be fun. I can't even reach the fuel mixture. I think I need a longer screwdriver than this. Yeah, it is a little, a little short. We'll get a different screwdriver. There's one over there in the show. All right, we'll get it let off. You got a rear brake now. Oh, you fixed the brake? Oh, you put pads in. It needs pads. What'd you do? Bleed it? I spent a whole zero dollars on new parts to fix the brakes. <laughs> well, I guess get the air out of the system. Yeah, I knew it had air in it. What's that? That's all that was wrong with it. Now we don't know if the starter is going to work either. I haven't tried that yet. Did you hook the battery back up? Yeah. Alright, let's see what happens. There's a starter button this thing. Must be that big egg thing right there.
rear brake works. Yeah, it doesn't drag either. We don't know about the front brake, but the rear one works. Well, they had to drive it in here or something. Yeah. No, yeah. they don't have to drive it. My dyno tuning said that the carburetor is fine once you get it rubbed up. So, so the jetting seems to be working. I might have burned some of the rust off the rear brake there a little bit. Yeah, a little warm. You got warm in this? Yeah, I don't want to touch it. Spit sizzles real good. <laughs> yeah, it's loose. Well, it's going to get looser as it goes this way. <laughs> it needs to be moved too. I'll try to move it. So that's the first clutch work. Well, yeah, I was watching with your hand. I gotta learn to watch with the camera. See right here? Yeah, I see it. Just put your finger between it and clutch. That's not a good sign. No, that's how it gets broke. There's something bottomed out someplace. <sighs> see, my first suspicion was the cable over here is way the hell in. Get the bug. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, way to hell it's supposed to be way the hell out here. Yeah. So that tells me it's probably bottomed out. Now, there's supposed to also be about three inch an inch between the clutch lever and the starter lever. Is there? Yeah. Back in here. Oh, they do have. Oh, huh. it's just a cow pie. You're supposed to be at 13 16 of an inch between here and here. Looks like there's about an inch up in here. So. Yeah. Camera. So you have to watch with your eyeballs, don't work. Yeah. So it's supposed to be 13 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, let me know where it bottoms out when they pull off. Okay. Looks to me like the lever's too low. It does to me too. It's the wrong lever anyhow for yes, a cow pie. Is. Yeah, if it's hitting the case. What a shocker. I'm positively shocked it's not correct. I'm not. I knew it was the wrong lever when I seen it. For a cow pie. You're gonna cut down wrong when it's incorrect? No. Oh, well, so much for uh, getting out here, right? Now, do you think that's going to actually come out of the transmission before it uh, lifts the bearing out of the tranny? I didn't put oil in the tranny. It was about 10 ounces low. It only holds 20, 24. <laughs> it was real close. I could cheat. Just go back further. Or you could sell her a new right clutch rod. So, can I actually get money for parts? Well, but she can't expect nothing for nothing. Well, she can expect it, but she ain't you always know, gonna get it. It's not gonna fly. She gotta spend that money somewhere. Registration would be nice. Well, that's not your problem. That's her problem when you get the ticket. Oh, is that what it is? That's CHP's problem, not your problem. That's uh, DMV, not CHP. Well, CHP's what's going to pull her over. Well, don't make money, yeah. Yeah. Put that back down real quick. It came all the way out. Oh no. Well, you didn't think that was going to happen? Well, yeah. I, I didn't believe anything to happen on this. Yeah. Can you go push that clutch cable all the way in over there for me? There's a lever. Just not pulling enough release. Let me screw it in. Yeah, we'll have to use an screw in. Alright, I screwed it in some. It actually moved? Yeah. It wasn't rusted? It's hard to believe. Yeah. 
There, I'll give you a little bit more. That was enough. Yeah, whatever clip was holding that lever in there, it's not. It's not there. That's extra. So that means that's going to be interesting getting that out. I'm sure it's not the first time that thing's been up and out. Like no. Again. Somebody couldn't, Bart couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Yeah. Ooh, sh look at that, we're lucky. I can't believe that actually wasn't on there tight like that. Now look at all the work it took to make that piece of crap. Oh yeah. That's custom. That's a custom it Takes part one of those cast ones. Yeah, I know. Let me go find one. All right, now you turn this off. Close the lid. Oh. All right, we're back. We missed some recording time there. You actually have to hit record to record. We're back. So I'm going to do a clutch adjustment here. Cable. See that? All right, we showed you a different lever, but I guess the camera wasn't on, so we didn't quite get the difference. So there's the correct lever for a cow pie. You see how it clears the top of the case right there. This is the modified ratchet lid one. They bent it up, they cut it, but they, the problem is you're not supposed to have this curve in there. See how it goes up straight. So it didn't quite work. Okay, now you're supposed to have 13 sixteenths of an inch clearance between the little ratchet, I mean the cow pie top here and the lever right here. So right now we are, looks like we're pretty close to the 13 sixteenths number. So we should be close. So we can lock down our adjustment screw. So this adjusts where the lever sets. And then this adjuster here adjusts up the free play in the cable. Oh, look, it goes all the way to the lever now, Rick. Yeah. So right now we have that much free play up, to, up there, which is quite a bit. Let's go down here and pull on this. You can see the clearance right there. Right there, it goes back and forth. So take up some of that. Pull the nut down. Then you look at your cable right there and make sure it's going straight back to the lever way in the back back there. So if the cable goes down like this and then back up, you know, it makes basically like a big Z bend in it, then that'll chew up the cable housing here. So these brackets get bent. Sometimes you got to tweak them a little bit to shoot it, to target it in the right area. So it'll be in there or down there. You want it right straight back to the lever. So you can see how that cable looks like it's going pretty straight. Okay, so we got our free play here. Got about an eighth of an inch. And now we go all the way to the bar now. Looks like it's supposed to. I'm gonna go show that over there. Right. Should be going over the top of the turning lid over there. Yep, see it's going over the top right there. Yeah, just like it's supposed to. Need a clutch release. That's how it's supposed to be. So over here, if you can release it, you release good when you just pull the clutch in. So that's not going to dry. You can do that by your hand. So it works good. Now I got these springs unjacked quite a bit too to make it easier to pull up here for her. I'm figuring she's probably weak. Like she's going to ride it. Got too much clutch to cover action. No, it's, so. that's. You get he's that guy with the other one to put his clutch in. There's complaining about that. Do he you, needs. Do you think the cable needs to be lubricated more than what I do? I, I don't. It's lubricated quite wide, but I, it, it sounds like a rough ass cable to me. It might work like half half the effort if you actually put a cable. On the cable. Hey, for a 1996 cable, like the tag says. Yeah. That's good. Well, I think ain't been rode since '96. Well, it hasn't been registered since '96. We can't vouch for the writing for it. Well, look at the speedometer. Look how many miles on it. He's been riding it for a month like this with the tags are 
20 years old. <laughs> all right. So here's uh, that all works right now. Now the shift drive, I got it where it just touched at the bottom of the peg, so she might be happy. I did my test ride. Do you like my test ride? Pretty yeah, good. yeah, that's good enough. Good enough. So we got the braking brake works. You can see them wearing some of the rust off the uh, rotor in there now. Look at that. See the rotor in there? Yeah. You can see how bad the rotor is by how it's only hitting half of it. Yeah. You can see how the rust is wearing off the uh, in there. <laughs> it's not hitting all the way across the whole face so. though. This side over here wasn't so dirty on this side, but you can still see where it's pretty eaten up. It's gonna, it'll wear that rust off when it starts eating into it. So, anyway, I think we're pretty well done with this for now. Let her go out and ride it and see if she can figure out to ride again. I'm thinking the license plate's a little sideways, what do you think? <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this. One shovel head. Let's see, without a cow paw, that makes it a 70, uh, late 79 to 84 style bike. So, close to the same as the earlier one, but about what it is. So, anyway, one timing adjustment is now done with a couple of extra things done to it. So, there you go.